Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, you guys are getting another Thrift to Treasure. Actually, it's part two of part, well, the part one was on Friday, part two is today. And I, first and foremost, before I go any further, I just owe everyone a huge apology. I did not mean to offend. Um, I did not mean to do any of that when I created the Annie Sloan book. And thank goodness for a little paint and I was able to go in and remove the where it said Holy Bible. So I received quite a few comments that there is only one Holy Bible and you are absolutely correct. There is only one. I guess when I put it, I was thinking so highly of Annie Sloan. She is the lady, the leading lady in the industry of chalk paint. And I guess I wasn't thinking. So I appreciate the comments and they were all very kind. Um, but yes, definitely you know, pointed out my mistake and I am only human. And so I'm so happy that you guys can give me all grace and that I can correct my mistake. So stay tuned. We have five more DIYs in today's video. For project one, anytime I'm out thrifting, I'm always looking for a good down pillow. Typically, down pillows are very expensive and very high end, so I always grab them and I pick these two up for $6 each. The first thing I did was I removed the pillowcases off of the pillows themselves. And I'm gonna flip it inside out and we're gonna use the actual pillowcase as a pattern for the new pillow. I also took the two down pillows and I tossed them in the dryer for roughly 10 minutes. Uh, now that I have the pillowcase flipped inside out, this is the fabric we're going to use. I ran to Walmart and I tried to find an inexpensive black fabric. Typically, anytime I'm out thrifting and I see bolts of fabric or any really cool fabric, I'm always buying it. Very rarely do I find a solid color and I really wanted to go with the whole black and white theme. So I grabbed this. It was a yard and a half and I paid roughly $4 for it. Now that I have the pattern cut and ready, I am going to pull out some drop cloth. I always pick this up. I get a huge piece of drop cloth for like $10 and I love using it um, to create pillows, to cut out different images. So I am going to measure it all out and I am going to create a cross. I have been working with a pattern from Roy Cycled called Mud Cloth and um, I understand that it's like an African look, but when I look at that decoupage paper, I honestly don't think it reminds me of African. It just reminds me of more of like a Swiss cross or something like that. So I am going with that whole theme because I am creating a vignette. So I am measuring out the cross right now. It took me a little bit to finagle like the measurements and how big I wanted the image to be on my pillow. But once I figured it out, I used my ruler and this is a ruler that I picked up at Walmart. It is for quilting and I love that it's see-through and I lined everything up and I got really nice straight lines and I used a very fine tip Sharpie. So it didn't leave, it, it was just, um, find enough that it was very easy to see my lines and to cut the fabric. The next step is I want to get any of the excess lint. And so I just took a lint roller and I removed any of the excess lint before I sew my pattern on. Once I have all the lint removed, then what I do is I just lay down the pattern, line it up exactly where I want it, and then I'm going to pin it in place. So I just use um, some little stick pins and I just put one on each end and I make sure my fabric is laying down very flat and then the image that I'm going to sew on, I want that nice and smooth as well because you don't want any bunching when you start sewing. I picked up this sewing machine at Walmart and it was super inexpensive and I definitely got my money's worth out of it. 
And if you are not an Avid sewer and you want something super easy to use, I would definitely recommend investing in a machine like that. Uh, I definitely, like I said, got my money's worth out of it right away. And I do see a lot of other content creators using hot glue to hot glue pillowcases together and things like that. And really with a sewing machine, it is so easy to just zap it together um, with just a, you know, running it through that sewing machine and with just a little thread. Um, and especially if you are reselling, um, I would prefer to sell something that was sewn together versus hot glued together. If you haven't sewn before, it is super easy. What I do is I just start on one side. I put down the foot of the sewing machine. I put the needle into the fabric and then you just hit that foot pedal and it starts going. On each of the corners, I leave the needle in the fabric. I lift up my foot pedal and then I turn the fabric so that I can reposition it and then I do that all the way around the entire cross. Now I'm sure that there are some amazing sewers out there and honestly, I never proclaim to be uh, an amazing sewer by any means, but I have put together quite a few pretty cute pillows and they've held together just fine. So I'm just showcasing like what I do. I know that in the past when I've sewn something, um, someone critiqued me that was a professional sewer and I have never proclaimed to be that. So I'm just showing you what I'm doing in today's project. I completely sew that image on, then what I do is I take it and I flip it the correct, or I flip it inside out, I should say, because when you sew the pillowcase together, you want it to be inside out. And I start on the bottom and I just start a little strip and then I work my way to the very top and I do that on each side. Once I get it completely sewn, then I turn it the correct way and I stuff the pillow back inside. Here it's completely done and that's now I'm going to flip it the correct way and what I do is I just when I flip it in um, the right way I take my fingers and I just make sure I get each of the corners um, pushed out and then I stuff the pillow back in. At this point then what I do is I just sew the bottom up and the pillow is officially done. For project two, I recently thrifted this suitcase at the Goodwill bins and it had a slight area that was damaged. Uh, I knew I could fix it though with a little bit of type bond. And so what I did is I squirted just enough type bond to fill the area but not completely ooze out. So very similar to when I use it on my molds, you don't want to have an excess and have it oozing all over. So today's uh, inspiration came from this image I saw on Pinterest. I'm always out on Pinterest getting inspired and I'm like, this goes with my whole theme. So once I get this all fixed, we are gonna try to recreate the image that I saw on Pinterest. Now that I have the glue in, I want to really hold this leather piece down. I'm using blue painter's tape and I am just going all the way down the side and I'm really pushing the leather into the suitcase and I go all up and down with that blue tape. I let it dry for roughly like an hour or two and then I start painting. Because I already had cut out the image for my pillows, I decided I was going to use that as a pattern. And I thought, well, I have white chalk pencils. It's definitely something I can use and you will definitely show up on black. The white chalk pencil did not work. And as I was fumbling around with that, trying to figure out, should I use a real pencil or what should I use? I realized that the image was just far too big. 
I know I talk about these clear rulers a lot, but I absolutely love them. It just really helps you create a very nice straight line. Um, I love how you can see all the lines through the ruler. So I basically finagled the size of this cross based on the size of the suitcase. Uh, that other uh, cross was uh, far too big, and so I went roughly two inches off of each side, and then based on that is how I came up with the measurements for the cross. After that, I took my blue tape again, and I basically taped the total outside of the cross, and the key here is when you're doing that you definitely want to go around the entire edge and just make sure that that blue tape is down really well so you don't get any of the seepage because i'm going with the whole black and white theme i'm using fusion mineral paint in picket fence and what i did is i applied one even coat i let it dry and then i applied a second coat and the coverage was absolutely perfect after that when I went to pull the tape, there was a little bit of peeling and I'm not sure how I could have prevented that. It was just on one of the sides. So I took my paintbrush and I just touched up a little bit on a couple of the areas. Other than that, I absolutely love how this turned out. I think it's super cute. And I decided after I finished this that I was gonna add one more thing to the suitcase. If you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm trying to use up all my scrap items. So any scraps of uh, transfers, uh, decoupage paper, I'm trying to use them in projects that I am flipping. So this image came from the uh, transfer called Traditional Pots from IOD. And all the products that I'm in using in today's video, you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. But this uh, transfer has a bunch of black images and it has a bunch of white images. And I thought, what a perfect opportunity to have that pop of white on the front of the suitcase. Now, if you haven't used a transfer yet, it's super easy. You just peel off that backing, you lay your transfer down wherever you want it, and you take that transfer stick and just start rubbing. And it just peels right off or it comes off of that piece of uh, paper that it's on. It's actually like a plastic. And uh, once you get it in, you know, completely on your project, then you'll take that piece and you rub it all over the transfer. And that is called burnishing. And it really embeds that transfer in your project. Last thing that is recommended is to seal your transfer. I took just a little bit of big top and I rubbed it over both of those little transfer pieces to seal it into the suitcase. For project three, I have had this in my stash for a while. And if you guys have been following me you know, for the past couple weeks, you will know that I did a major uh, clean out of my basement storage area. It was out of control and this was down there. And honestly, I remember picking this piece off the garbage or off the side of the road and uh, the drawer front was broke or the whole drawer was and it was not fixable. So I kept the drawer front because I thought there was always something that I could do with it. So today what we're going to do is we are going to paint it and use a paint inlay to just completely transform the look and feel of it so that I can use it on one of my gallery walls. For starters, I'm taking off both of the handles and then I'm wiping it down really good so that it's nice and clean when we paint it. 
because we're going to use a paint inlay, I am using White Swan from DIY Paint. A paint inlay can be used either with a chalk style paint or with a top coat. So with the chalk style paint, what you need to do is apply two coats. So on the first coat, just put a nice even coat down, let it dry, and then when you come back for the second coat, you want that coat to be just a little bit thicker to put your paint inlay in. I am using the Annie Sloan Paint and Lay, and if you aren't familiar with the Annie Sloan Paint and Lay, both her and Debbie Beard collaborated with the IOD sisters to design their own paint and lays. So Annie Sloan, she designed this whole the whole paint and lay, came up with all the different images, and there are I believe four sheets of these images, and I think they're so cool. So I want uh, going across, I want want to have that same image repeat. So I'm using three of the pieces and I'm cutting those out. What I am doing initially is cutting off the excess paper on each side of the paint and lay. That way when I lay my first paint and lay down and I'm laying my second one, it can be just a really nice snug fit next to the second one is right around that middle uh, metal piece I just take my fingernail I kind of make a mark around that whole piece and cut that out then I lay all of my papers down I just make sure exactly everything is gonna fit and now it's time to add that second coat of paint the second coat of paint should be a little bit thicker than the first coat. So what I started to do here is I want to add the paint inlay in the center first and get that positioned and then I'm going to add the paint inlays on either of the sides. So I apply just a nice even coat of the white swan. Again, make it a little bit thicker than the first coat and then I'm going to miss the paint inlay and position that first piece. Once I get that first piece laid down, I smooth it out with my fingers, take my misting bottle, and then I mist it really well. Again, smooth it and really embed that paint inlay in that wet paint. Now that I have that first piece positioned and in place, it's time to put the second piece on. Again, I add another layer of paint and then I am going to line up the one side and that is key. You want to make sure that your patterns line up and you position that and then you lay it down and start smoothing it out just like you did with the first. So repeat those same steps, smooth it out with your fingers, just get out all the wrinkles and then mist it and then we're gonna let these all dry and we're gonna come back and we're gonna remove that paint and lay. Now that it's totally dry, and that's really key, is you want your paint and lays to be completely dry before you remove them. Once that's done, then take your spray bottle, mist the entire paint and lay again. Once it's all um, wet again, you just start peeling off your paint and lay. It is so satisfying seeing that paint and lay completely embedded in your piece, and already I am loving this. Now don't forget, keep your paint in lays because you can use them an additional two to three times. Each time you use them though, they'll have a little less paint and your piece will look a little bit more distressed and distressed each time. I love how the paint inlays have a bit of like the worn distressed look to them. It is not absolutely perfect and so I am just taking a wet rig and I am going to wet distress the rest of the piece just to make it look all old and aged uh, just like the paint inlay looks. The last step of a paint inlay is you do need to seal it and you can seal it either with a top coat or you can use a wax. When I was at Debbie Beard's uh, paint inlay reveal party, they did use wax to seal it. So it, I was like, is it going to work? And it totally did. And it looked absolutely amazing. What I'm using here is Big Top and I am just applying a really nice even layer and that's the kind of the tip that I'm going to recommend is with a very light hand load up your paintbrush and uh, rub it over the paint inlay. Don't put a lot of pressure on. I have heard others say that they uh, their paint inlay smeared when they did that. If you have a light hand and you load up your paintbrush you're going to be absolutely fine.
The last couple things I'm doing is I'm reattaching the hardware and I'm going to paint that back and then this piece will be totally finished. For project four, when I was out thrifting, I recently found this heavy duty wood crate. I have found smaller ones like this guys, but this one is substantial. It is such a nice, big, chunky box and I loved it. I did not love the hearts and someone actually reached out to me when I did my thrift haul. They were interested in it. They never got back to me. I've had it sitting uh, aside for them for a while. So I decided, well, I'm going for it. So today, what my vision here is, we are taking mud cloth and we are gonna wrap the whole perimeter of the base in mud cloth. So I am starting with a white base. Anytime I'm using decoupage paper, I always like to start with a white base. So I'm applying one even coat of white swan to this. I'm going to let it dry very thoroughly and we are going to start decoupaging. Well, that's drying. I am using Fusion's Coal Black and I am going to paint both the top and the bottom coal black. And if you haven't worked with Fusion Mineral Paint before, it does have a built-in sealer, so there's no reason to seal it beyond just painting your piece. I'm, like I said, applying one even coat. This does have a really good, um, it's heavily pigmented, so it has a really good coverage. Now that the top and bottom are dry and the center, it is time to apply the decoupage paper. I am using mud cloth and this is an from like an African descent um, is what I've under, or what I've heard uh, that what that's what mud cloth is. And actually, when I look at this, I've actually looked up mud cloth on Google and I really didn't see any images like this. And this reminded me of more like just little crosses all over the image. And so that's where I'm going with the whole theme is all black and white in my vignette and I'm applying this to the entire base. So I figure out exactly what paper I need to cover it and I cut off the excess and I apply that first piece and then I do that I have to pull out a second piece of paper line it all up and then I apply the second piece of decoupage paper around the rest of the base. If you haven't used uh, decoupage paper before, uh, it is so easy, you guys, and my go-to medium is called Liquid Patina. It works so well with recycled decoupage paper, and I start with doing a starter strip, and I talk about this often because I think it's so key that if you start this way, it eliminates a lot of the wrinkles, and it helps you have better control over your entire piece. So I apply just a nice even layer of the liquid patina. I lay down my first strip of decoupage paper, smooth that out, and then I work my way down. There is a little bit of excess paper on the top, so I take my sandpaper and in a downward motion, like away from the paper, I sand it. And that gives me a, just a nice crisp clean edge and then really this project is complete. For project five, on a recent live, I upcycled three out of the five rolling pins. So I still had two left. So today we are gonna take one of the rolling pins and I am going to show you guys what a paint inlay looks like 
on the second use. So I am starting off by painting the base of the uh, rolling pin white swan. We're going to let that dry. And then as we apply that second coat, we're going to do the second use of the paint inlay. Now that the roller is dry, I laid out the paint inlays and my vision here is I was going to put one paint inlay on one side and then flip it over and do the other paint inlay on the other side. It did not work out exactly like that. So I think it rolled a little bit and then when I applied that second paint inlay, it was not perfectly even, but I came up with a solution. I have that third piece of paint inlay left over from another project and I cut that down and I just added another strip in there. So anytime you're using a paint inlay, you want to add two coats of paint. So we have the first coat on, we're applying the second coat. You want to mist your paint inlay to reactivate the paint on it and then lay it down into that wet paint. I again I smooth out all the wrinkles and any excess water. I always spray a little bit more um, water on it with my misting bottle and then really embed that paint and lay in your project. I let it dry very thoroughly and then I reactivate it with misting it again and then peeling it back. So we're gonna work in stages with this because it is a uh, roller and I can't use all the paint inlays at once. So after this one is dry, I'm gonna show you how we remove it. This section is completely dry and I am remisting it and this is so satisfying when we remove the paint inlay, but I absolutely love the look of the second use. So the first time you use a paint inlay, you're going to get the most vibrancy because it's a full paint inlay. Each time after that, it's going to be a little bit less and less. So this is what it looked like the second time, and I love it. I think it's perfect because this roller i want it to look like old and aged like it's been used a million times and that's the look you get with that here's a little bit more of a close-up and now i'm going to just repeat those same steps for the other two pieces I didn't catch this on video, but what I did is I took Little Black Dress from DIY Paint. It is the perfect paint for wet distressing, and I applied just an even coat to each of the handles. And there it is, a Little Black Dress, uh, definitely my go-to paint for wet distressing um, and blending. I love it because it's such a great chalk style paint. So then I'm taking a wet rig and this is where I'm going to wet distress those handles. Just make them look all aged and old and just randomly rub here and there. The last step is I'm using Big Top and I'm going to seal the entire piece and after it's sealed, this project will be complete. The question may come up, can you use this roller? Uh, is it food grade safe? And I would have to say no, it's more for decor purposes only. So what did you guys all think? I hope you enjoyed today's video and were inspired to try something new of your own. I know with part one, some of you guys didn't like the black, white, black and white and some of you did. It was kind of a mixed bag this week. So I think it was whether or not you liked the mud cloth paper or you liked Annie Sloan's paint and lay. So that was kind of where I, you know, I brought these two um, videos because I was definitely creating a lot of black and white for a vignette that I am putting in one of my booths. So I'm really excited because I have some turquoise chairs and like all these turquoise accents that are gonna go with this black and white. And I think it's gonna look pretty darn amazing in a specific vignette. Now, Friday's video, I'm actually not sure yet what, you, what I'm gonna give you guys, whether it be another thrift to treasure or I might bring you along for my next booth flip because the vintage shop pop is right around the corner. <laughs> 
and I have a lot to get done in my booths. So you guys, I will see you on Friday. You have a wonderful week. If you guys have enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you guys all think. And if you haven't yet subscribed and you love my channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notification. So every Monday and Friday, when I put out a video, you'll be notified. And remember, I am still doing my lives on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I am giving you guys a whole lot more content and I cannot wait to see you on Friday. Bye.